Shohei Otani's having a 50-50 season. I think the Blue Jays have a little speedster of their own. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. Welcome back. As always, I'm Brayden Wasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, Brayden 5 Wasco. Carter First, too, as well on Instagram and TikTok, at Locked On Blue Jays. Uh, if you're new here on YouTube, make sure you drop a subscription. You guys have been killing it as of late. Let's keep that going, trying to get as many Jays fans as possible. Um, and if you're listening anywhere else, make sure you come by YouTube. Drop a sub anyway in case we go live or shorts or whatever. There's tons of stuff that's here on YouTube. So um, go over there, drop a subscription there as well. A uh, lot to get into today. I, I talked about who was, who's the Blue Jays' new speedster? Who's the fastest player on the Blue Jays? We'll get into that right away. Uh, we got some games to go over, a series to preview in this dog days hell of Toronto Blue Jays baseball that we are in. Um, obviously, this year, uh, the Blue Jays got swept by the Rays over the weekend. So this is going to be a great Monday episode. Carter. Can you take a guess who you think the fastest player, fastest looking player on the Toronto Blue Jays is? Fastest looking player on the Toronto Blue Jays, fastest player on the Toronto Blue Jays, maybe the fastest player in the league. I think we, we got to start here. We got to start with the man. First ever triple, Alejandro Kirk, like the road runner out there, absolutely flying around the base paths. Congratulations to Alejandro Kirk for the triple. I love watching this guy rip around the base paths. You can, you can tell on his face that he is trying his absolute hardest to give his all. And I love that for Alejandro Kirk, the guy that's really picked it up uh, in the back half of this season. So, uh, yeah, if you want to, maybe he's going to be tra- training with Usain Bolt uh, in the offseason and get those uh, stealing numbers up. We got our first triple. Now we need our first steal. God, could you imagine a day that Alejandro Kirk decides to steal a base? Um, I think like the Ricky catcher- Henderson out there, man. Like he was flying. Yeah. God, the catcher would probably have to wind up, throw the ball into the outfield purposefully for Alejandro Kirk to steal a base. But it was great to see. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, and you know, I made the I made a couple jokes on Twitter as well. But it really do. Good for him that he was able to, to leg out that triple. Well, and let's be honest. Like, looking at that play, like, he just loses the ball in the lights, right? Like, that's exactly what happens. Like, it looks like he just completely pulls up at the end. Brandon Lowe just misses the ball. Doesn't even get a piece of it whatsoever. And uh, it was still kind of a close play at third base. Uh, the throw was more accurate. I think uh, it might have been more of a bang-bang play. But, yeah, congratulations uh, to our king. Absolutely electric stuff uh, from the trop. But other than that, like, that that was the highlight of the weekend, easily. Like, that was a Alejandro Kirk triple. He got some good pitching performances from a few guys. Vladimir Grove Jr. is just one of the greatest players of all time, it seems like. Like, yeah, you, you lose three in a row with the trop. You uh, you really the tankathon. You're taking it serious. It really helps the the Toronto Blue Jays out. They uh, they didn't want the Rays to jump up. Uh, they, they they want better odds. The Jays are are in it for the long haul. They don't care about these meaningless games. They uh they want they, we want Ethan Holiday. That's where we're at. Yeah, and and sort of I think the most frustrating part about this weekend it was, it was I'm fully in. Whatever uh, you know at this point I don't care what happens in the games um, because there's what six games left, Carter. I, I just I just don't care. I, you know, if we get the better draft pick, we get the better draft pick. If we don't, well, okay, it's, it's baseball. Um, the, the sort of crazy part of this whole weekend for me was that every game was a one run ball game. The first game on Friday, one, nothing raise the second game on Saturday, three, two raise the Sunday game, four to three raise. It just was like, I, I don't know. I, I almost, by the time Sunday rolled around, the blue Jays were down four to two. And I'm like, they're going to make this a 4-3 ball game, and that's going to be how it ends. And sure enough, that's how it ends. It is just – it's getting to a point now where maybe we've just watched too much baseball, Carter, where I can predict exactly what's going to happen. Like, it is disgusting. When Nathan Lucas – we'll talk about this – lays down the bunt to uh, the squeeze bunt, Carter, I almost knew he was going to get thrown out at home. I, I literally said it right as he was laying down the bunt. I'm like, oh, he's out at home. It's, it's getting that – 
I don't know. Easy to read for this Toronto Blue Jays team. I don't know. Great pitching performances, though. Let's maybe start there. Yeah, I, I think we're just used to the pain as uh, Toronto Blue Jays fans. We're just we're used to it not working out very well for us. We always uh, go the negative route. And a lot of those times when we are making these predictions, unfortunately, they're not a lot of the time the good ones. A lot of time, it's the Blue Jays throwing baseball games, making bad plays, and doing things that aren't fun to see on the baseball field. Yeah, you go down the line with these, this pitching. Ryan Yarborough, again, just doing what he does. Jose Brios looked very good. Uh, Yariel Rodriguez, that start, I'm, I can't take too much away from that. He did the typical thing where he throws a million pitches in the first two innings. It's tough to go deep into a baseball game. But let's get more into this. We'll start on the Sunday game. You get your Ryan Burr opener. This guy is just a strikeout machine at this point. He's uh, three strikeouts in uh, the first inning there. Uh, with a double as well. So that's uh, quite the interesting start to the game. And Ryan Yarborough just completely eats innings. It's, he goes out there, he'll throw 90 and just give you four innings of probably no run ball, five you know, five innings, six innings even. So Ryan Yarborough, Yarborough has been a very good piece at the, the end of this deadline. We went over him uh, last week. A guy that the Toronto Blue Jays should definitely look at keeping. Probably not a guy you want to pay 10, 11, 12 million dollars. But when you need a guy to come in in these random situations, you can have Brian Yarbrough come out in the second inning. You can have him come out in the seventh inning. You can have him start the game. You can have him come out in the third inning, as you saw with uh, Ryan, Ryan Burr opening this game and then Ryan Yarbrough coming in in the second inning. Never going to blow you away. He's not going to be a guy that's going to get a million strikeouts. He's going to get that soft contact. Try to get you innings. He's going to eat those innings, especially after maybe your starter doesn't have his best stuff of the day. So Ryan Yarbrough has just been doing what he's been doing with the Toronto Blue Jays ever since he's gone here. And honestly, the entire season, a guy that uh, has just been very adaptable to uh, different situations that you can put this guy in. Yeah, he's he's been exactly what sort of they needed for this back half. And, and it's nice to see. I Again, will he carry over into next year? Will there be a contract? I don't know. It's tough to say. It's going to be interesting to see what the Toronto Blue Jays do with the bullpen moving forward into 2025. That's really what I'm looking at it. You know, who's going to get that contract? Who's going to stay with the major league team? Uh, especially on a day like a bullpen day, it's very easy to, you know, look at a bunch of different guys. And, uh, you know, Sunday was sort of what we got. It's it's too bad that the Blue Jays offense couldn't, uh, couldn't turn it up. Uh, because really, I mean, you allow four runs, but I don't know. You had the opportunities. Like we talked about the Nathan Lucas squeeze bunt. In, if that's a, if he doesn't do that, the Blue Jays probably tack on two or three runs there. Um, so it, it is frustrating. Uh, but I don't know, Carter. Besides that, I mean, it, I don't really have much else to say on a bullpen day start. Uh, going back to, uh, or I guess taking a look at the offense from Sunday, I guess we'll sort of go like that. There's no sense of bouncing all, all over the place. Um, I mean, again, Ernie looked like an absolute dog out there. Uh, you were saying it sort of as we were, you know, chatting in the living room earlier. You were sort of talking about how how great Ernie's been, and and you're right. He he's been electric. He's been a, a great guy to watch. Um, yes, and and he's he is streakier as well. Like I know there's a couple of games that he you know was going over, but uh, then he turns up and he'll have two or three four good games back to back. And so I love what Ernie's been doing lately, Carter. He's been uh, one of the only bright spots uh, on this Toronto Blue Jays team. When you we'll go back all the way to the start of the season, this is a guy that uh, I wanted to be an everyday player, and uh, this is kind of why I wanted that to happen. He's very good defensively, defensively sound. You can play him anywhere, and you see what he's been doing recently. He's well let off a game uh, this last weekend, I think a lot into last week as well. He's hitting two. He's hitting earlier on in this order, which is very nice to see. Uh, you get this guy at the top of your order again not the greatest leadoff guy you can't see because he doesn't get um he doesn't walk a lot as we've uh, gone over before but this guy doesn't strike out either if you want to do hit and runs he has so much versatility to his game uh contact hitter barreling up baseballs and again you look in this game has three hits so a great game from Ernie Clement one of my favorite players to watch on the Toronto Blue Jays and one thing that I'm going to be watching up pretty close to this season is how they monitor Ernie Clement because they do have a lot of players Sort of with this mold, you got guys like Will Wagner, you got guys like Leo Jimenez, you got guys that you can kind of throw anywhere throughout your infield. So with Ernie Clement, you uh, you get a very good floor. You probably know what Ernie Clement is going to give you. He's not going to get uh, the most home runs of all time, but you have seen the games where Ernie Clement has popped off and had very good games as well. So I think we're just starting to see what Ernie Clement can do for this team. And I'm really hoping that the Toronto Blue Jays can bring him back in some sort of capacity for the 2025 season. Yeah, and, and again, we're going to look at all of this sort of in the, you know, moving into the offseason, into the uh, into the preseason, everything like that. There's going to be so much talk around so many guys. And, and what do you do with them? Where do they play? Who will be signed? Who won't be? 
Um, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. This offseason is going to be fun because I think we're going to see a very big turnover for this Toronto Blue Jays baseball team here. Um, but in saying that, Carter, uh, Vlad had a great day um, as well as he seems to always do now. It just It's hard to find a game that Vlad isn't hitting great. Um, not a great day from Spencer Horwitz or Addison Barger, but, uh, you know, going down the list and stuff, Carter, again, we're at the point where I just don't really care. I'm going to be, I want to see my guys that are going to be playing next year and I want to see how they're going to be doing. Other than that, I couldn't really care less. We're going to get back into the other two games, some other stuff going on, Carter. Uh, and I think we'll take a quick break here. Uh, then we'll pop over and talk about those other two games. Today's episode brought to you by Booking.com. Explore those U.S. cities you've always secretly wanted to learn more about. Maybe it's time to taste test your baseball's competition stadium cuisine. Luckily, on Booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. With Booking.com's wide variety of choices across the U.S., you can go incognito to all your baseball rival cities. I talk about that all the time. We went down to New York. We watched the game. We used Booking.com. I, uh, you know, It was a blast. The Yankees suck. I hate the Yankees, but it was a fun time. Booking.com delivers exactly the right U.S. stay for you. Booking.com can help you book stays that's close to your home teams or rivals stadiums. We always talk about, um, you know, how great it is to be able to travel and sort of put the traveling aspect out of your mind. And Booking.com makes it super, super easy. Booking.com is one of our favorite places to use. Make sure you check it out. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Today's episode also brought to you by FanDuel. You guys all know we love FanDuel. And now it's getting to crunch time here with not a ton of Blue Jays baseball left to bet on. They got NFL. You got your NHL starting back up. So make sure you get in. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets FanDuel is awesome for that. It's so easy to keep updated. Place your in-game bets. I said the live same-game parlays. You can bet them all right as it's sort of going down. It's the best. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. So, Carter, we talked about sort of the Sunday game, but there's still lots of game to go over here with the other two. I mean, maybe not so much the Friday as it was sort of a snooze fest. Uh, but going in on the Saturday, I know actually we were just talking about Ernie Clement and, and how good that he's been lately and, and sort of over the year, Carter. And I'll throw it to you because, uh, you know, Ernie really didn't play. He got one at bat in the Saturday game. But overall this season, I know there's something you wanted to bring up. Yeah, just a, a testament to how valuable Ernie Clement actually has been for this Toronto Blue Jays team. So one thing that we haven't talked about uh, as much recently on this podcast is war. Wins above replacement for players on this team. Pretty much just saying, uh, how many wins will a player being in your lineup give you on an average scale? So when we're looking at Ernie Clement, a pretty good war for a year, like for an average player, you want to say what, three and a half, would you say? Three to four, somewhere in there. I think that's a pretty successful year for a lot of players. Obviously, you have your guys like Ron Lacuna, Shohei Otani, who I, if I checked his board, probably be at like 10, if I had to guess. Probably absolutely insane. I'll let you out look that up as I keep going here. But Ernie Clement, a guy that didn't uh, wasn't even necessarily a, had a roster spot going into the season, a guy that uh, some people thought should be playing in AAA Buffalo, but as we go on to this season, the only two players with a higher war than Vladdy on the Toronto Blue Jays, or and sorry, then um, Ernie Clement is Vladdy. And then you also have Dalton Varsho in there, obviously playing very good defense. But Ernie Clement is the third highest war for position players on this team. And that's something that is is not like nobody gives Ernie Clement enough credit, I find. I feel like this is a guy that really flies underneath the radar, especially what Vladimir Grove Jr. is doing. Again, is Ernie Vladimir Grove Jr.? Absolutely not. Not the greatest comparison there. But with Vladdy doing how good he is with some of these other prospects, the guys that the young guys were focusing on, I feel like Ernie Clement really goes under the radar. And this is a guy that uh, we should be getting more excited to see uh, for this 2025 baseball team. But uh, going back into this Saturday game, uh, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the Saturday because you're right, Friday was horrendous it was terrible an absolutely horrendous baseball game Jose Brios is really good but anyway back uh, to the mission at hand here Yariel Rodriguez four innings pitched four hits three earned runs three Ks three walks I don't know it's it's kind of whatever at this point you want it to be better obviously but Yariel Rodriguez did his thing where he just could not find the strike zone earlier on in the game 
you get that pitch count up fairly early with the guy that uh, is already on an innings limit. You're kind of worried about uh, his fatigue and his throwing arm not playing in the 2023 season. Uh, with Yariel Rodriguez, again, you want him to ride this momentum out. But with this start, it's kind of like a nothing burger for me, unfortunately. Not taking too much away from this, not getting overly excited, not getting overly worried. Just uh, a guy that's going to have to go through ups and downs uh, as we work our way to the start of 2025. Yeah, it is sort of a nothing burger game and, and nothing burger start for Yariel Rodriguez in this one. Uh, Carter, uh, just going back to what you said, talk about Shoya Otani, 8.4 war on the season. So just insane stuff from him. Uh, but getting back to the game at hand, Carter, yeah, it, Yariel Rodriguez has has been that guy sort of all year where you just, you almost know, he, he's almost badly consistent or, or mediocrely consistent where he just goes out, he's going to give you four innings but he's going to let up two, three, four runs a game. And and I can't really consider that a great outing, Carter. And, you know, uh, other guys, they'll have those. And, and, you know, we can sort of brush them off because then they'll go out and they'll throw you seven with, you know, only allowing one run scored. So it's – when I look to ahead to 2025, I don't know where Yariel Rodriguez fits in. And I think it might be at best – in the bullpen and that's at best i could see him starting the season i mean depending what happens obviously with injuries and and you know everything around that there's a lot of you know different circumstances that this could you know be but if everybody's healthy carter i could re- realistically see yaria rodriguez being a triple a pitcher right now and that's tough to say because i think eventually he can be a good starter for this team but do i realistically think it's next season not really See, my perspective on this is I think Yariel Rodriguez is for sure going to be with the, the team at the start of the season, just with Alec Manoa being injured. You got other pitching injuries, unless they go out and sign a starter, which wouldn't be the worst idea. There has been some talks uh, getting more of a lower leverage starter. You wouldn't be going out and signing a guy like Blake Snell as much as I would absolutely love to see that. You'd probably be going to get a guy that's probably going to be like a fourth rotation guy because you're, you're looking at your rotation right now. You have Kevin Gosman, who you expect to be a number one ace on your team jose Brios, that as we've seen as we've talked about can put up ace numbers chris bass is going to be a very good middle rotation guy for you bound francis is looking like an ace on your team right now so again that hasn't been come with a lot of consistency so you, maybe you don't necessarily rely on that too much for 2025 and you got alec manoa who will definitely have a spot on this roster but you probably will not be ready for the opening day so there is some things this team could do again free agency is going to be a massive thing with like, a lot of guys on this team like yari Rodriguez, ernie clement free agency will matter to him all these prospects that we're talking always talk about joey lopravito will wagner you as we name them but uh as we go through you you, you want to just see good things and if you are, that means yari Rodriguez for his development he has to play in triple a then i'm not going to complain about that this guy still has four more years on his contract for the toronto blue jays after this year and we're talking about the bullpen we talk about how bad the bullpen is you have those five starters and you have to throw Yari Rodriguez in the bullpen. You've seen how good he was in 2022 in the Japan league coming out of the bullpen, a sub two ERA strikeout machine. And then he can kind of ramp it up a little bit. You'll probably see a below spike from Yari Rodriguez in the bullpen as well. So we don't necessarily have to worry about innings. There's a lot of good things that can come from the bullpen. But as you know, as if you watch the MLB, you get paid a lot more to be a starter than you do out of the bullpen. So for Yari Rodriguez and his career, he probably wants to be a starter. The Toronto Blue Jays might have to adapt a little bit. They might kind of throw him in uh, as like the Ross Stripling role from a couple of years ago, throwing him in kind of anywhere. Maybe a little bit of that Trevor Richards role as we saw this year. And now the kind of what Ryan Yarbrough has been doing. So this team has always had a guy that's kind of been the Swiss Army knife. So maybe Yari Rodriguez has that opportunity to be that role in 2025. Yeah, and that, that's sort of where my thought process was. If, if It depends how this team wants to utilize Yariel Rodriguez. If their goal is to develop him into a starter, then I think AAA is your best option. But if you want to use him now for the best possible situation for next season, then yeah, you're probably right. Be, let, him, let him try to eat out of the bullpen and have him in those, you know, longer relief situations where you can go out and put up, you know, go two innings, three innings. And had have that as Yariel Rodriguez's outing. It's going to be an interesting conversation to have over the offseason and where he'll sort of end up. And I think that's that's going to you know be determined by who signed in the free agency, Carter. Um, and you know what? Just going sort of over the rest of this game. I mean, again, Vlad has another good day. Uh, Spencer Horwitz goes two for three. He looked pretty good. Uh, sort of a not so great day from David Schneider going 0 for four. Ernie Clement, like I said, pinch hit, went 0 for one, is what it is. Uh, and then, Carter, moving into the Friday game, of course, you talked about Jose Barrios and, and his electric outing. Six innings, six hits given up, only one run, six Ks, one walk. 
Uh, he just looks good again, Carter. It, I think he's, you know, he sort of was so hot at the beginning of the year, then cooled off during the middle of the portion. And now is back to being very good, Carter. He's been electric. At, like every game that he comes out for, I can't remember the last time that he had a bad outing. He has been very good in this backstretch. Uh, one of the better pitchers and a guy we probably haven't heard about as much as we should have because of what another guy on the starting pitching rotation has been doing over the last little bit. But as we uh, we go into Jose Barrios, it's just a guy that uh, is, again, we know exactly what he's going to do when he goes out there. Like He's going to give you that six innings, and he's going to give up the longest moon ball of all time. Let's talk about Jonathan Aranda. This guy has six home runs on the year. He hit three in the series. What, what are we doing here? Like, what, what is this? This just typical, like, re revenge game against the Toronto Blue Jays. You got a rival, and just all of a sudden he wants to come play. He had a lot of good swings. A lot of good swings. That pitch uh, that Jose Rios threw was another good swing, driving that out. And that's the only run of the ball game. Again, your offense needs to score, obviously. You need to get yeah. runs to win a baseball game. But Jose Brios, if you I don't know anything about Jose Brios, he's going to go out there, probably give you five, six innings, and then he's going to give up a home run ball. Again, solo shots shouldn't hurt you. You should be able to overcome a six-inning, uh, one earned run game. But in Toronto Blue Jays fashion, they don't do that, unfortunately. But uh, just I want to go over uh, Jose Barrios, just over his last seven games and how good he has been. So he has is six and one. Again, win, wins and losses don't matter, but it is nice to see your team winning when you're out there. One five four ERA over 46.2 innings pitched. 38 strikeouts to eight uh, walks. Also has eight earned runs and a whip of .86. Just a, a very good run for Jose Barrios, having one of the better seasons of his career. And again, this stretch has been very good for Jose Barrios. And the only reason we haven't heard about it is because of Bowden Francis. But going back down the stretch, you look at the three pitchers right now that are hot. Kevin Gosman's looked really good. Jose Barrios has looked really good. And Bowden has looked unbelievable. Chris Bassett's starting to fumble a little bit. This is a vet. He'll probably bounce back next season. That's why, at least for the starting rotation, I'm pretty excited going into 2025. I think that's probably the spot where you have to do the least amount of digging and gathering in free agency. Yes, you want to add some depth to this. Definitely not a bad mood to add starting pitching depth. You can never have too many pitchers, as we've seen uh, this season, especially out of the bullpen. So, again, a ton of things to have to address. Starting pitching, probably the thing I'm least worried about for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, me too. And it's hilarious. You said those numbers as I had them pulled up as well, ready to ready to cook them. Because they are, it's 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 electric to see when Jose Barrios is doing well, because the statistics are just nuts. Um, but in saying that, I, I'm right there with you. I think that the starting pitching is not an issue for this team. And I don't think that should be a focus or even really look too heavily upon going into this offseason. Don't mess with a good thing. They've been good for two years. Don't touch the starting pitching. The biggest concerns, obviously, are the bullpen and getting bats into the lineup. They need bigger names. They need another star, Carter. We talk about this. You can't win with having a ragtag team anymore. You need those superstars to help your team get to that next level and get to the next level of being a World Series contender. And am I saying that the Toronto Blue Jays are going to be with one big-name signing? No, but it de is definitely going to help when you have a healthy Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Hopefully George Springer can be better than he was this year maybe when he was hot during that stretch um and then obviously guys like spencer horowitz who and ernie clement maybe who can fall into this lineup the alton bar show again hopefully he can have a better season as well there's a lot of question marks around this team and we got way more uh, information for you guys going in to the off season but we still have a series to preview carter a couple of things to go over we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back with all of that Today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you can pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is very simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in as little as 60 seconds. So we're at the point of the season. There is six Toronto Blue Jays games left. So I'm definitely going to be uh, throwing a lot of my picks on these Blue Jays games. Again, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is on the loose. This is pretty much a given every single time I do make picks. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. more than ends on bases. They still have him at one and a half a lot of the time. I'm hammering that pretty much every single game. Spencer Horowitz against righty is another one that I'm going to hammer as well. And I was talking about Ernie Clement a lot this podcast. Hammer some more than ends on Ernie Clement as well. He's definitely been paying out for, for me a lot recently, and he'll do that for you as well. So if you know which players are going to perform on specific nights, this is a no-brainer. Download Prize Picks to start making your picks today. You can download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for first deposit matchup to $100. That's code Locked On MLB for first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, run your game. 
So, Carter, we talked about the games that happened over the weekend, some other things, some Jays news. Uh, it is it is tough. It's getting to that point in the season where we come on here every day and we don't necessarily have a big idea because a lot of our questions and a lot of our episodes are tailored to the end of the year now because we're that's what, what we're looking at. We're looking at the end of the year for the Toronto Blue Jays. So there's going to be so many electric episodes that are coming out. We have so much planned for this offseason that gives you guys – a breakdown on the, the season players did have a look ahead to 2025. Who needs to be moved? Who needs to stay in? And a whole lot more. But that's to come in the next next uh, few days. We are going to plan for uh, to go live one night, uh, you know, have some beers, talk about, you know, anything you guys want to know related to the Blue Jays, our opinions, your guys' opinions. We'll have, make it an open discussion. Uh, let us know sort of if you guys want to want that to happen. We're going to try to make it work. We were planning for next weekend sort of as the end of the season type of thing. Uh, but apparently this weekend's packed. So maybe we're thinking about like a Monday night, maybe Carter. We talked about the Monday night being the go to is it's the holiday Monday here in Canada uh, or uh, whatever. So we're going to get into that hopefully Monday. Uh, in saying that Carter series to preview my man. I don't know. Do you have the probables up? I think I have them, but. Uh, I, I don't because they're playing the Red Sox and I <laughs> could care less who's pitching, honestly. Uh, Bound Francis, you get that start. Obviously, I am uh, dialed in for that one. But other than that, I mean, you get swept by the Rays. At this point, the Toronto Blue Jays are committing to the Tankathon. So if they uh, if they want to get swept by the Red Sox, I'm going to I'm gonna give them my blessing this time. If you want to take another uh, six game series or six game loss in a row, I'm not going to be mad. You get a get out of jail free card from uh, from me from the Locked On Blue Jays on behalf of Brain as well, whether he agrees or he doesn't. But uh, looking at looking at the series again, uh, like there's not too much for me to say anymore. Just going to enjoy baseball while it's on. Uh, hopefully they're just entertaining games. Maybe get uh, a couple high scoring games in there as well. In the Bound Francis one, maybe I'll, I'll take a one nothing game there if we get the win there. But uh, other than that, I don't have too much more to talk about for the Boston Red Sox series. But I do have a one thing that we did miss, and I can't believe that we did miss this, uh, about game three of the uh, game against the Rays. Oh, yeah. John Schneider. We talked about this guy maybe injecting a little bit of uh, fuel and energy in this Toronto Blue Jays lineup. We said maybe get kicked out, get the boys fired up, maybe uh, put a lot on a little bit of the up, up, up performance for the fans. I was a little bit uh, – it was underwhelming. I'll say it's say the least underwhelming. Uh, Henny Cabrera throws a pitch – Oh, I think it was 1-0 uh, at the knees. Probably a strike. Again, you're playing the Rays. It's, both teams are not playing for anything. I guess it's a division rival. I get uh, you're getting paid millions. Obviously, you want to play every game the same way. John Schneider, I guess, saying something from the dugout. We never got what he said. Hey, we tried to, I tried to read his lips. I couldn't really tell. Didn't get any audio from there. But John Schneider chirping something, saying something from the bench, gets kicked out, and then just kind of a little – little aggressive conversation i guess i can't even say he was yelling it was just uh like getting his face just talking loud it looked like and uh didn't really come too much from that but brain were you uh were you fired up for john schneider going out there what's your uh opinion on uh this uh this take here you yeah oh goodness you know my take on this i mean i i think i've made it very clear i am i i understand and i'm i'm all for coaches and, and managers getting tossed in situations that affect your baseball team that are going to get your guys going if, if, you know, you're going on a run, you're getting a bad call, you may have to get out there and, you know, back your guys. This situation does not call for it, Carter. I'm, it's it's a nothing burger. You're, you're out of the playoffs. Everybody knows it. Now you sort of just like 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 you're whining a little bit. And I don't know. It's, it's too little too late for me. If you wanted to do this, blow up early in the season. Let your players know. Let everybody know. Let the fans know that you're serious about winning baseball games. Doing it now means nothing to me. I don't know. Sort of just felt like it was a little bit too, you know, too little too late. You could tell that John Schneider did not want to get kicked out of that game. That was not his intention whatsoever. He just made a comment on the bench. And then when the ump kicked somebody, kicked somebody out, no, we didn't even really know who it was for the first little bit. I figured it was John Schneider. I actually thought it might be Pete Walker for the first little bit. And then John Schneider uh, obviously arises from the dugout. Just obviously said something uh, not under his breath loud enough for the umpire to hear, but it was just probably a random remark, just a one-liner. And I guess the ump uh, had enough. Obviously saw that the Toronto Blue Jays aren't that kind of a baseball team this year. 
Probably just fed up with John Schneider and uh, his BS, so got him out of there. Uh, it was the eighth inning anyway. It didn't end up mattering too much, but I just thought that was a, a funny thing to happen when we were talking about uh, hopefully John Schneider injecting some fuel into the boys. But, yeah, I, I'd rather you not get kicked out if you're going to do it like that. That was uh, very underwhelming for me uh, at this point of the season. I wanted I wanted fireworks. That's what I wanted him to throw some bats, maybe, like, take home plate. I don't know, get the garbage can out. Why not? Get Do something crazy. But uh, we didn't get that, unfortunately. But uh, probably good for John Schneider and his image. But it would have been fun for us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Carter, just to sort of end off, cap off the episode, the Bowden-Francis start will be the first game uh, in the Marlins series. So uh, look out for that. Well, that's uh, Sorry. ridiculous. Sorry, I guess that ru- you ruined my Boston Red Sox series, unfortunately. Yeah, don't even, you know what? This, is, this series is now completely pointless. So there you go. Uh, anyways, guys, we have so much more content coming throughout the next week, week and a half here, heading into the off season. A ton, a ton of content is coming from us. We actually have like a notebook filled with content ideas and, and stuff like that. So keep a lookout because uh, we're putting in the work and uh, we're going to try to get you guys all the best information going into the off season to get you guys prepared for the for the off season and heading into next season because it is. I don't know, Carter. It's it's rough out here, right? The Blue Jays need to make moves. There need to be there has to be moves made. So hopefully the Blue Jays will pull the trigger and do something. But we'll have to wait and see. As always, guys, if you you know we appreciate you guys making us your first listen every day. If you want to find somewhere to make your second listen, go check out Locked On MLB with host Paul Sullivan Sully. He's our guy. He runs a great show. He'll keep you guys up to date on all the like the major storylines going across the MLB, not necessarily Blue Jays specific, but. There's uh there's lots of news and information, especially going into the playoffs. So make sure you check that out. Carter, my man, anything else before we sort of get out of here? Uh, not too much for this episode. As you said, there's so many things we do want to talk about. Uh, we still have a huge plan for the off season. Uh, George Springer, Vladimir Groh Jr. with the Boba Shet stuff, what Bowden Francis' role is going to be. There's so many ideas that we do have. Which prospects might make an impact next season? Is there going to be a trade of these prospects? As I said, a lot of guys on this team do a lot of similar things. So uh, eventually you just have too many spots that, uh, or sorry, not enough spots and too many players that uh, to fill those spots. So you might as well get some assets uh, to put maybe for the bullpen, as we've been talking about, because we definitely need some bullpen pitchers. But no, other than that, uh, not not too much. Uh, Tanner Houck, I, I want to see um, the Toronto Blue Jays get to him. I, I want a Houck blow-up game. That's kind of where I'm at. That's the uh, the first game of the series, so that will be today as this episode is coming out. Other than that, I'm just going to kind of t- I'm t- I've been taking a step back this last week and a half, just enjoying the baseball that's on. Again, I want to see good games. So even that one nothing game, I got a little bit of enjoyment out of. I know it did kind of suck at the same time, but I just got in the back of my head. I just got to think. We have a very little amount of Blue Jays games left. I just got to be optimistic and enjoy the ride while we still do have it. So I'll say it. I said it before. I'll say it again. It's going to come to December. I'm going to be bored out of my mind, hoping or wishing that there was a one nothing loss to the Tampa Bay Rays on the TV right now, just for something to do. But I would like to say thank you guys for watching. Likes, comments, uh, everything recently. The support has been uh, crazy, especially with where we're at in the Toronto Blue Jays season. But we have noticed that about 68% of you guys are not subscribed. So if you're coming back every single day, watching our videos, tuning into the podcast, it helps us out a ton. Also keeps our podcast at the top of your page. That, that's all I got. We're moving on, getting close to the end of the year. Sunday's the last day of baseball. That's uh, it's gonna be a little bit unfortunate, but we are sports guys. As much as we do have the MLB, still got the NFL. I'm a big NFL guy. The NHL's coming back, so we'll, we'll have some other things to keep us preoccupied. But uh, I'm definitely going to be missing Toronto Blue Jays baseball in the dog days of the winter.